Hey everyone, so I was finally able to find some slides that will uh, show up on the screencast better. Uh, the book images didn't cut it. It was too small and it didn't project very well. So I found some images for you. So we're going to do a, a review of the light reaction mechanisms. Uh, so it's going to be basically a description of how the light reactions work in the thylakoid membrane, so the pictures are much better. This is in the form of a review, light comes in to the photosystem. Okay, Photosystem is composed of this blue protein and these green pigment molecules. Okay, So when light hits those pigment molecules, you get an excitation from one to the other, this wave-like pattern. Um, you do not need to know that this is called P680. Let's call it the special chlorophyll in the reaction center. Ultimately, this is going to get excited and give electrons to the primary acceptor. Okay, so keep in mind the jargon may be a little different, but this is the uh, reaction center chlorophyll. And it gives electrons to the primary electron acceptor. The reaction center here is this lighter blue purple color. Okay. Once these electrons are given to the primary acceptor, there's a loss of electrons here. And we talked about how water is the molecule that helps to replace those uh, electrons. So you get oxygen and hydrogen and the electrons go on to replace this electron once it's lost. It goes to the primary electron acceptor. Those electrons are then passed down the electron transport chain. So this part right here is the ETC. Again, remember this is all in the thylakoid membrane spanning right here. We have the ETC here. It's just a system of membrane proteins that carry electrons. So they're going to get it from the primary electron acceptor and pass it down here. Okay, so continuing this picture, it passes it down here, ultimately giving them to the next photosystems. You don't need to know that this is P700. Give it to the next photosystems. Reaction center chlorophyll. Sorry, this handwriting is horrible tonight. Okay, so it's the same process as before. You're going from photosystem to electron transport chain to photosystem. Uh, the electrons here come in here. They're, they're given to the next primary acceptor. And then this acceptor gives the electrons to NADP+. We know now that NADP+, once it takes the two electrons, right here and right here, now is going to be called NADPH. Okay. This molecule here is going to go to the Calvin cycle. Okay. We need to speak a little bit about uh, the details of this electron transport chain. And I'll do that in a moment. But if you recall from before, the electrons, once they get here, once they're found in the uh, reaction center chlorophyll, they are low energy. Remember, the, the energy has been extracted by the electron transport chain to pump hydrogen ions, which we'll talk about in a minute. So the electrons are low energy. We need to boost them. Boost slash recharge. How do we do that? Well, there's another bolt of light, basically, that will ripple down here to recharge these uh, electrons. OK, so really, these photosystems, guys, what they are are charger stations. They excite electrons and, and basically push electrons through. So this process can, can happen in the presence of light only. There's another nice visual here to display what's happening to the electrons as they move from the first photosystem in, in the system to the second photosystem in the system. So uh, 
light basically stimulates those electrons and they go from ground to excited up here. Eventually they find themselves uh, in the primary electron acceptor. They move down the electron transport chain right here. So you notice it's going from high energy to low energy, high energy to low energy. Okay. As that's happening, it's basically moving this wheel and ultimately that wheel will make ATP. But when it gets to the second photosystem here, guys, the electrons are, are once again lower. They need another boost up to this high energy state. Photon of light is what provides that boost. So it's actually kind of a cute figure to, to describe how you go from low to high, down the electron transport chain, they actually end up lower, and then they have to get another boost from light. It's sort of a simplified diagram. And we kind of skipped over uh, the electron transport chain. That's right here, right here, and right here. So I want to go into a little more detail here now in this overview picture. You know about the first photosystem and how it uh, is replaced by water. The electrons are replaced by water. You know about this, the second photosystem in the system here and how it's uh, recharged by light. How those electrons are given to NADP+, which creates NADPH. NADPH goes to Calvin cycle. I want to talk about ATP. I want to talk about how we get ATP. Uh, the electron transport chain is what does that. So this complex of proteins right here, right here, and right here. Out here in the stroma, there are a little amount of hydrogen ions. Okay, so it's low. We want to take these electrons and pull that, or I'm sorry, hydrogen ions and pull them into uh, the thylakoid space. So we basically want to pull them into the thylakoid, guys. So from low to high. From low to high is a form of active transport. So we need to do active transport. You know something about active transport. You know that it requires energy. So the question is, where do we get that energy from? The solution lies in the electrons right here. Right? So the electrons that are being passed down this chain contain energy. And essentially what the thylakoid membrane does is it extracts that energy to do this, to move this guy in, to take this guy and move him in, so that we can create this high concentration in here. So it takes energy. We take them from electrons. That's why we need this second uh, jolt of light to, to energize these electrons. Okay. So now we're in a situation where we have this high concentration and this low concentration out here. The concentration inside the thylakoid space is high. The concentration in the stroma is low. So these hydrogen ions will move from high to low through that process called diffusion. And they move from high to low through ATP synthase. So this protein right here, guys, is ATP synthase. It's a membrane protein with a special role. What happens is once you get this flow of electrons, or of hydrogen ions, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, hydrogen ions, once you get that flow through here, you're going to get enough hydrogen ions passing through here that this guy's going to start to spin. So once ATP, ATP synthase spins, it's going to give energy to the cell, enough energy to couple together ADP and phosphate. And you know what happens when you get ADP and phosphate together. You can regenerate ATP, that energetic molecule that we've been trying to make. ATP goes on to the Calvin cycle. So NADPH and ATP are the products of the light reactions, but they're the reactants for the Calvin cycle. I hope you appreciate that relationship there. Lots of ink on this picture. Uh, lots of stuff going on. We're going to go over this again. We're going to review it. 
you know, please just take some time and look at this. It's, it's a complicated process, but with a little bit of review and a little bit of focus and hard work, you can totally master this and it's, uh, it'll be critical. And this understanding the electron transport chain will make cellular respiration a lot easy because we're going to encounter this again when we talk about cell respiration. Okay, so I hope that helps. Let me know. Talk to you soon.